Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My husband Chris and I live in Texas and are slowly making over our old house. Today I'm sharing something a little different. We started this pond project back in early spring and due to everything that's been happening in this pandemic and really huge changes in our lives, we're just getting to post it now. But be sure to subscribe because next week we have a crazy announcement coming out and you just don't want to miss it. Hi everyone, today we are in our backyard, Chris and myself, um, and we are going to move our stock tank pond to a different spot in the yard, just like over there more. Um, right now there's no fish in the pond, um, but we do have a pond plant that is kind of dormant. As you can see, it's a water poppy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it back a little bit to a different spot. And before we do that, we're going to level out the ground. We are also gonna put down some weed cloth and we're going to put gravel. Right now it's just kind of sitting in the dirt and it's sinking on one side. So we really just want to be able to set it up correctly this time. And in that process, we're gonna to have to drain the pond and basically set it back up again. So we will be showing you exactly how to set up your own stock tank pond, even if you're starting from scratch, because we're gonna to have to move it and do all of that and basically start from scratch anyway. It does take a little bit of time for the water to get established before you can safely have fish in the pond. Um, so that's something to consider if you're doing that. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to, Chris is already starting right now. We're gonna measure out right here. Say hi, Chris. Hi. Um, he's gonna measure out where we want this to be. So right here in the circle, um, that's where we're gonna move the pond that's currently right there. So our first step, we went to Home Depot and we picked up this um, edging and then also this uh, weed control cloth stuff. We also have anchoring stakes um, and then staples got a bunch of this um, fresh limestone stuff and this is what we're going to use underneath the fish pond. We chose to have two feet of rock around the pond which is a six foot tank so we ended up measuring out a 10 foot circle. We didn't do this super exact or anything but basically Chris held one end of a piece of five foot string in the middle of where we wanted it and I took some orange spray paint and just marked the circumference of the circle into the grass. We then started to remove the grass and weeds as best as we could with a pick and some shovels. In retrospect, we probably should have treated the ground for weeds and found a better weed barrier because this grass definitely grew back through everything. If you live in Central Texas and have a good solution for a weed barrier, please leave me a comment below. Zion spot. There are many like it, but this one is his. So definitely not a perfect circle, but I think for our first time doing this, this is pretty good. And with the gravel and the stock tank, you're not really going to see the edges that much, um, especially once the grass grows in a little bit more.
camera battery died, but during the time it was charging up a little bit more, we were able to drain the pond. We got this pretty much finished over there. Chris is working on getting the gravel out and there's a lot of nastiness in there. You can see how green it is. What do you think, Chris? Uh, shovel. Okay. So he's just going to shovel this out and then hopefully we can patch the sides. Make it look a little bit better. You're going to want to level your stock tank before you fill it with water. We used a 2x4 across the top and then a level to determine how even the tank was. We then added extra rock in different areas to bring it all up to the same level. You can see on the side of our tank that we've used some marine sealant already. It looks like white caulking up the seam. It's common for these metal tanks to have leaks when you go to set up a pond. Even if you have a brand new tank, these are typically used for farming purposes where the leaks may not matter as much. In order to find and seal your leaks, you will need to start filling your tank with water. We recommend you do this before any gravel goes inside. Let your tank fill up and sit for a while and then inspect the exterior for any wet spots. Take note or mark where they are, empty your tank, dry it with a clean towel, and apply your marine sealant in those spots. Follow the instructions for your sealant to allow it to cure completely and try your luck again with refilling. So when I went to tighten this, it spun the whole thing and pushed this gasket out. So I'm going to pull it out, check the gasket, make sure it's not torn, and just give it a little bit of marine sealant to prevent leaks. First I just want to inspect the gasket, make sure it didn't tear. And the surface of the gasket looks fine. water applications you always want to use a marine grade sealant because it won't rot okay so you kind of had to cut off the top because it's an old thing of sealant but it's got some there and you're just putting it on the gasket part yep. a little bit goes a long way
Once you fill your pond up with water, you'll want to add something called pond start. We got this at Walmart. It has beneficial bacteria and a chlorinator to remove the chlorine that's in your tap water. Basically, you'll just follow the directions on the bottle. It'll show you an amount to put in per gallon. And now, this is where our lives got kind of crazy. Along with the rest of the world, what you will see now was filmed just a few weeks ago, so our pond already had the plant set up as well as some of the fish. So this filter is very simple. It's got just a tube, a large particle screen, and there's two filter images. It's your coarse filter element. It kind of gets a little bit smaller particles from what this would get. And this is your fine foam filter here. It's a little gross, you know, it's been in the pond, uh, but this is your fine element. So this will get all the fine particles in here. Also in this, we have these bio balls here. So these little balls here is what the beneficial bacteria kind of stick to over time and help with the filtration process. And then lastly, we have your typical pond pump here. This, this came with this, everything in here came with our kit. Uh, goes together real simple. Back in there, cleaning out as easy as just spraying these back off. Get as much debris as you can off of it. So assembly of these filters are super simple. You got your pump and your balls, your bio balls <laughs> your in here. Your balls. Get your fine filter element, put it in there first. Your coarse filter element, get it in there. And then your screen goes on top of that. So the reason you go that order is the pump pulls water from the bottom, so it draws water through all the filters first and then pumps it back out. That's how your filter works. Get your tube, kind of have to line up everything with the holes, stick it in there, screw it on. Get it nice and tight. So now, now it's in there. Looking uh, guy here, you can kind of just flip that on if you want. I've been leaving mine off because I find that these small holes get clogged real easy. It doesn't help with producing oxygen in the water very well. It's not I pay the surface as much as it needs to. Okay, we'll just go one now if you want the flow, so we'll go and throw this back. The pond. You know, Can you have that on top of the center block? Or? Just sitting on the bottom. Sitting on the bottom, okay. And then we'll just plug it right in. Okay. Okay. At first, the water may be just going to come out of it from the cleaning process, but over time, it will clear itself up as it filters. I recommend. Um, if you're in an environment around trees like us, uh, checking the filter, you know, once a week, every half a week or whatever, just as debris gets in there. Um, if you're in a more open setting where there's less debris, you might be able to go two weeks without checking your filter. Yeah, it kind of depends on like the temperature, like the season, the temperature, if you have fish in there, yeah. um, if you have plants in there, because like right now we have fish and plants in there. Um, we have a, what is this called? A water poppy? A water poppy. Um, which will grow bigger. It's still kind of coming back from the winter. And then I don't think you can see because our pond is kind of green right now. We're trying to kind of clean it up a little bit. But there are some fish living in this pond too. Um, and then we're in Texas, central Texas here. So uh, mosquitoes, of course, are a problem too. So having uh, fish in your pond that will eat mosquito larvae of course, we'll help that out as well, right? Yes. So, cool. And then how is this plant working in here? Is this, because I know we put it on top of like a cinder block, but I, I don't think I filmed that. So the plant itself is in a pond safe plastic container. Mm -hmm. uh, it is planted in a mixture of gravel and the topsoil underneath the gravel. Mm -hmm and then it's sitting on top of a cinder block. Because this plant d uh, has to be, have the, the base fully submerged now, different pond plants might be different, but your local nursery would be able to tell you yeah. um, how to plant them.
I hope you enjoyed watching us move and rebuild our stock tank pond. Be sure to subscribe because our next video has a huge announcement and you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.